Legends tell of a place, a place that is cursed for all eternity, a place where black stone monoliths with jagged edges protrude from the sandy soil. There are hundreds of them, and they stretch for miles. They aren't uniform or orderly, and they twist and angle themselves chaotically. At the base of these stones, there are inscriptions of human faces contorted into screams, though most of them have faded as to be unrecognizable. There is nothing majestic about these black spiked stones. It doesn't inspire awe or wonder. It makes your hair stand on end. You know this is not a place you're supposed to be. It's cursed. You might think, from this intro, that this is the start of a Lovecraftian-inspired short story. I wish it was. No, this place is real, or to be more accurate, will be real, in the year 2036, when we build it. Why are we building what looks like a monument to a Lovecraftian god, you might ask? Well, we're hoping that this place keeps any future civilization out, keeps them from exploring it, disturbing the soil, and especially from building and living on it. Why? Because beneath these terrifying monoliths houses decades of the most dangerous nuclear waste of the past 60 years. In our time, this area is known as the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, WIP, located in southeastern New Mexico. This area will be designated space for the interment of high-level waste. High-level waste is waste that will remain radioactive for thousands or even tens of thousands of years. Most radioactive waste is not considered high-level waste, but due to the sheer amount of plutonium enriched in this country over the decades, it has piled up to a significant amount. All high-level waste is required to be buried in these deep geological repositories, like WIP. The storage of the waste at the facility is supposed to finish up in 2036, upon which the facility will be sealed up and the tunnels collapsed. The location for the facility was chosen because the area is on a giant salt bed. As early as 1957, the National Academy of Sciences recommended salt for radioactive waste disposal, as salt becomes almost like a liquid at a great depth, allowing for all cracks and crevices to be filled. After the collapsing of the tunnels, it will be sealed with 13 layers of concrete and soil. The disposal of substances so toxic that they would remain harmful 10,000 years into the future is a controversial topic, but not the point of this video. We've created it. It cannot be uncreated. We've stored it the best we can. Now comes the hard part. How do we ensure that this is a tomb that future explorers never open? Civilizations have tried a variety of things in order to keep the curious and intrepid out of their sacred places. Some rigged traps. Some tried to scare you off with the threats of horrible curses. You know, basically everything you see in an Indiana Jones movie. But if there's one thing you learn from that movie, is that those threats do not dissuade us. Human curiosity is seemingly unquenchable. You might wonder how this relates to the nuclear waste storage sites. There is no jewel or treasures at these sites. There is no great king buried here. Why would anyone seek to unearth a bunch of toxic nuclear waste? It is likely nobody would knowingly seek it out, but life from the future could accidentally find it, or they could misinterpret or even not believe our warnings about what is buried beneath them. This waste will be dangerous when our society today is three times older than the pyramids of Egypt are to us now. Over 10,000 years could pass and the entombed waste would still be deadly. And if we know anything from history, it's that the past becomes murky. We understand some things from the ancient world, but so much becomes lost either through deliberate destruction or just the natural progression of time. Think of how much modern academics debate the past. Was Atlantis real? Was it made up? Was Stonehenge just a giant calendar? Or did it serve another ritualistic purpose? What knowledge was lost in the burning of the Library of Alexandria? What was once known can easily become unknown. Imagine how many empires and civilizations could rise and fall in 10,000 years. 
and how much languages will change and evolve or even become lost entirely. We want to keep people away from an area for 10,000 years. How do we do that? Well, first, we have to create a message that can last for 10,000 years. So let's carve our warning into granite, a stone that erodes at an incomprehensibly slow rate. We can't carve it in English, though. How about carving it with 20 languages? It would be kind of like a Rosetta Stone. But what if civilizations of the future can't decipher ancient writing? What if the message is misinterpreted? These are problems that the Human Interference Task Force has to come up with solutions for. This task force is a group of engineers, anthropologists, nuclear physicists, behavioral scientists, and even science fiction writers. The following is the solution they came up with that will be used around 2036 when the nuclear waste is entombed, hopefully forever. The warning message would be conveyed non-linguistically through pictures. The essence of the pictures, for simplicity's sake, would try to communicate the following message. This place is a message, and part of a system of messages. Pay attention. Sending this message was important to us. We considered ourselves to be a powerful culture. This place is not a place of honor. No highly esteemed deed is commemorated here. Nothing valued is here. What is here was dangerous and repulsive to us. This message is a warning about that danger. The danger is in a particular location. It increases towards the center. The center of the danger is here, of a particular size and shape and below us. The danger is still present in your time as it was in ours. The danger is to the body and it can kill. The form of danger is an emanation of energy. The danger is unleashed only if you substantially disturb this place physically. This place is best left shunned and uninhabited. This message would be communicated in layers of complexity. The outer layers focus more on the dangers, with the inner layers communicating why it is so dangerous. The thought behind it is that certain people will inevitably be more curious and want to know more, so as they travel through towards the center of the site, more information will be revealed to them. In the center there will be a granite monument that outlines information about the element of plutonium, its properties, and star charts that will show when in time the nuclear material was buried. As for the area around the monument, they plan to create black granite or concrete spikes around 25 feet high that would jut out from the land in intervals. These spikes would have pictograms communicating the warning message. Some of the suggested pictograms would even have human faces screaming, a message that the task force thought would be universally understood. Well, there you have it. Nobody would go there, right? It looks like a monument to all that is cursed. Unfortunately, this is where I will have to disagree. I think people in the far future would be quite interested with this terrifying vista. I will admit even I want to visit it. Perhaps it's the best solution we could manage, but I wonder how much reverse psychology might take place here. Did the threat of curses and plagues keep us out of the ancient tombs of Egyptian pharaohs? Imagine you stumble upon this ancient tomb in the desert. The inscription on the tomb reads, all who enter here will die. It shows pictures of people entering the tomb, then collapsing. There are other symbols, but you don't understand them. You're not a superstitious person, though. You know that curses don't exist. If they place these warnings here, then doesn't that mean that there is something truly remarkable hidden? After all, isn't that what you would say to all prospective looters and treasure hunters? If you enter my tomb, you will suffer a fate worse than death. Not even very original, is it? Cliché. So you break into the tomb, but inside you don't find treasure. You find what look like cracked containers. And strangely, there's heat being given off by these containers. The containers show the same symbols that were inscribed outside. You now know, though, that you made a mistake. This was no tomb before, though it might become one after. So how do you tell the future about danger and convince them that it is indeed dangerous? How do we keep the future from thinking we're bluffing? The information at the center is definitely helpful, 
If future civilizations are more advanced than us, they will probably have knowledge of the periodic table and understand what plutonium is. That is, if the complex messaging is not eroded or faded away. Granite erodes extremely slowly, but star charts and the periodic table carved into granite will fade in time, especially if the granite becomes cracked or fractured somehow. It will also help that there is no magical door or entry into this toxic waste dump. If anyone wanted to unearth it, they would have to dig 2,000 feet down into the sand and salt and past the 13 layers of concrete and soil. Still, I hope we aren't underestimating the future's capability to ask, what if? I suppose there's no perfect solution, and perhaps science fiction writers could think of better ideas that the future could implement. And speaking of science fiction writers, what would H.P. Lovecraft think if he could see this place? Especially after learning that we built it, and that beneath the cursed monument was buried perhaps the closest thing to an eldritch horror as there ever will be. He wrote in The Call of Cthulhu, quote, The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little, but some day the piecing together of dissociated knowledge will open up such terrifying vistas of reality. End quote. This might be one of those vistas. Except, would it surprise him that in the future the great old ones won't be ancient alien monsters from outer space. They will be us. <laughs>